In this video, we're going to check out the Elementor Site Mailer app, which is designed to make sure that your emails stay out of the spam folders of your visitors, clients, and users of your website. Many times, multiple times a day even, I get emails from people saying they didn't receive a specific email from my website, and I ask them kindly to check in their spam folder, and it's almost always there. And this plugin aims to solve that problem and from what I can tell, it does a pretty good job. Plus, you can use this on any WordPress site. It does not need to be built with Elementor. So watch this video, sign up for the free plan, give it a try, see if the emails end up in the inbox, not the spam folder. And if they do, that's fantastic. And if you do want to upgrade to a paid plan, it's not really expensive. I'll show you all the details in this video. Hi, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Now let's get started. So here's the problem that this new Elementor plugin, SiteMailer, is trying to address. Let's say this is your client's site. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. People are checking out. There's stuff they want to buy. And when they buy things, you're going to receive emails, email confirmations that a purchase went through or didn't work. Or when they sign in, they're going to get passwords sent to them. But what often happens after a certain amount of time, not in the beginning, but after a certain amount of time, stuff ends up in your spam folder. This is the spam folder from one of my email accounts right here. This I sell widgets here is a demo site. Somebody, a bot probably, left a comment on the Hello World post, but it's in the spam folder. We didn't get it in our main inbox. Here we have limit login attempts, sending us notification that this IP address is trying to try a brute force or guess our password. Also in the spam folder, this might be something you want to know about. It should be in your main inbox. I don't have any examples. Here's our login attempts. Oh, there's a whole bunch of login attempts. In this inbox, I don't have any examples of WooCommerce emails being sent into the spam, but they'd go into the same place. But hang on a second. This lady here wants to send us huge amounts of money. How much? $2.4 million. That's great. I can get that right now from uh, Professor Maxwell Brown. That's fantastic. I just got to email all my information to him, maybe my bank account numbers and login details, and he'll just transfer the money over. That's awesome. I'm going to do this right after I finish this video. Not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do this. <laughs> if you get emails like this, don't do it. Just delete it. Be careful what you reply to and what you believe in your email inbox. But what I believe is that specific emails shouldn't be here. Like this one shouldn't be here. This one shouldn't be here. And that's what the new Elementor site mailer aims to fix. So on the Elementor site, if we go to products, there's one called site mailer. It says all the information about it. You can get here via the link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. If you end up getting a free account with SiteMailer or even a paid one, I do get a credit for that. It does not make it more expensive for you. It's just an easy way for you to support me in this channel if that's what you want to do. And like I said, there's a free account. If we can get to the pricing. There's the pricing plan. So it's pretty simply laid out. You have a free trial for $0. You get 200 emails to test it out. That's not per month and it's not per year. It's 200 in total just to test it out, see if it works for you and your website. Then for $3.99, you can bump up to 1,000 emails per month for all websites. This is for one website. But you can choose a higher number of websites up here. So if you want 25 websites, it'd be $4.99 a month. You get 1,000 emails for 25 websites. That doesn't sound like much. But keep in mind, this is most commonly used for transactional emails. Like if someone goes through the forgot password process on your site, or if someone signs up and they get um, their login details sent to them, stuff like that is what this is mainly used for. You can use this to send out newsletters as well, especially if you have a plugin like MailPoet that runs on WordPress for sending newsletters, then you might want to have one site and have up to 100,000 emails sent out per month if you're doing it as a newsletter sending service. And if you're doing this for clients to make sure all the transactional emails, like the forgot password ones, are sent properly, you can bump up to 100 sites, 100,000 emails a month, which is plenty. That's 1,000 emails per website. And very few sites can be sending that many transactional emails. And it's only 127 a month. If you pass that cost on to 50 different clients. So divide 127 by 50 or maybe by 60 to give a little margin for you as well. That ends up not costing very much. A lot of this stuff is quite technical and it's all designed to make sure that your emails end up in the inbox and not the spam folder. So don't worry too much about that right now. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in this video.
The first thing you have to know is how to log into your dashboard. And then we go to plugins and add plugin. Then we look up site mailer. That should bring it up. There it is right there by Elementor. Click on install now. If this is a live website, you might wanna back up your site first, just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare, but just in case something does go wrong, it's great to have a backup. I'll link to tutorial in the description down below to help you back up your site if you need help with that. Click on activate once you're ready. And even though this is an Elementor plugin, it does not require Elementor to function. This can be installed on any WordPress site that you have or that your clients have. Here we have to connect to start. So we have to have at least a free account that we get through this page here. You can get here from the link in the description, as I mentioned earlier. Click on connect to start. Then we're gonna click on connect and continue. You'll see what account level you have, an expiration date in the middle here. And this is our beautiful email address out of the box that emails are gonna be sent from. Luckily, we can update this to be our own domain, meaning for this website, it would be websitedevxyz.com. Click on got it once you, you've got it. And this is the dashboard right here. It's pretty simple, but it shows you all the data you need. We're gonna send a test email or two in a little bit, but first we're gonna to go to general settings and over here we can customize some things. So the email that's received by your customers, your website visitors, the header is gonna look like this by default. It's gonna say site mailer, crazy email address, and then to you, which is the person who filled out your form or signed up for your, to your website or whatever. So up here you can change the name. It updates in real time right there. Reply to email. This is the email that when they click reply in the email that they receive, this is the email that's gonna be auto-filled to send the reply to. So make sure it's a live email. Otherwise the email will bounce and your customers won't have a great experience. And up here is where we have to change our domain. Click on add custom domain. Gives us a few warnings. We've got to change DNS records. It can take up to 72 hours. Don't use public domains such as Gmail because you can't edit the DNS records. You can edit the DNS records if you use G Suite, that's different. Okay, let's do it. In this first field, we have to enter the domain we want to authorize. I'm going to use this website's domain. Let's copy that and paste it in there. Let's erase these things. It doesn't like those there. So it's just the domain name dot and the TLD, which is the information after the dot. Add the sender domain you want to authorize to send emails, support at this domain right here. Then click on next. Now we have to log in to where we registered our domain. That could be GoDaddy, it could be Namecheap, it could be G Suite, it could be a hosting account if you bought it through there. In the case of this website, the DNS records are with the hosting account, but the domain is registered with Namecheap. But I switched the name servers on Namecheap to point to the hosting account, so the DNS records for the C name that we're gonna update are in the hosting account. If you need help or suggestions or tips in finding your C name records, leave a question or comment down below and I'll see if I can help. It's pretty tough without actually logging into things, but I can give you some pointers, I think. So on my hosting account for this website, if we scroll down, this is a cPanel skin. So cPanels often have a lot of the same apps and options that just look a little different. Somewhere you're gonna find one called Manage DNS. So let's click on that and then choose the website you wanna manage. And then we have a list of a bunch of stuff. That might look a little confusing, but don't worry about it. Just follow what I do in this video, it's, it's copy and paste. We're going to add a CNAME. We choose CNAME from the dropdown, and then we have two spots to put data, one over here and one over here. Yours might be structured differently, but we need to put the host, let's press the copy button, into this first one here, where the website was auto-filled on mine, and then the value, needs to go in the other one, right there. And then click on add record again, choose CNAME, copy the next one, put it in there. If you already know what you're doing here, just skip this part of the video and skip ahead. I'm just gonna go through it all for people who haven't done it and might not know. Copy the last one, paste it there, and this one. Paste it there. And then, once that's all done, click on Update DNS. Scroll down, make sure, or scroll somewhere. There they are. 
make sure our stuff is there and there they are and now back in the website we can check this box i've updated my domain records with the values above click on verify my domain we got some error messages this is likely because it can take up to 72 hours for the c names to propagate which means basically notify on the internet everybody has to be notified and just update everything usually it doesn't take that long but sometimes it can take a few hours and this host i bought off AppSumo a while ago it's super slow shouldn't have bought that one Anyway, we're gonna just close out of here. We're gonna try again later to verify and update the domain. Here it also says the same thing. I just said it can take 72 hours. In the meantime, I think we can still send test emails from this crazy email. So let's give that a go. Let's put in this email address and send test. Test email was sent, check your emails. Okay, let's put in another one. And this time we're going to Turn on this toggle, show email content in log. Let's turn that on. There we go. You also have the option of adding list unsubscribe headers. We recommend turning this on if you're sending marketing emails to improve deliverability. You can find the list of people who unsubscribed in the suppressions tab. Turn this on only if you're sending marketing emails, newsletters, promotional emails, things like that. If it's just transactional emails like forgot password, you don't need to turn this on. So I'm going to leave that turned off and I'm going to send the test to this email address as well. And let's see if we can find those. Found them both. In this email account, WP Learning Lab, we received this message. And in Launch Time Media, we received this one. It also shows images in this message are hidden. This message might be suspicious or spam. This is supposed to help us get around that using this Elementor plugin, but it could be because of this crazy email that that's being flagged. And it still landed in my inbox. It didn't actually go to spam, but it's saying maybe it is spam. Click on this button to report it as spam if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to click on show images instead. And there are no images, but I bet you that image was a pixel. And that pixel is used to track opens. So if we go to back to our email logs here and refresh the page, tracking the sending of emails is really easy because the system just sends an email and bada bing, bada boom, it's sent. I believe the ISP also gives feedback on whether emails are delivered, but opens can only be tracked if a pixel is sent back to somewhere. In this case, probably to our website and to this plugin specifically to say that this pixel was loaded, therefore this email was opened. If we click on refresh data right here, it should update our stuff here. Wait for it, did not update. Oh, it did. So it shows two delivered emails and two opened emails. And it's that pixel that was loaded for the image. So if someone gets that message that we had here and they decide not to load the image, it will show as unopened even though they might have opened it. So keep that in mind. These, these stats aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. And down here it shows the log. This first one, we didn't have the selection on that showed the content of the email but on this one we did. So you can see the whole email content right there. And it shows a bunch of information about it. And if someone contacts you and they say they didn't receive an email, you can resend the email by clicking right here. The reason they didn't receive it should not be because it went into spam, because this plugin was designed to keep emails out of spam, but you never know. It's always a best practice to tell everyone to check in their spam folder. Now we have two emails sent, this many are left, and this is per month, which can be quite a few, as long as you're not sending newsletters. So if you want to check out SiteMailer, click the link in the description down below. It'll take you to the page where you can sign up for the SiteMailer. Pick the plan that's right for you based on number of websites and number of emails or to start with the free account. If the free account is enough for you, that's fantastic. But keep in mind, these 200 emails do not renew. So those are going to run out eventually. And $3.99 a month for 1,000 emails, that's if you pay yearly. It's $4.99 if you don't pay yearly. For 1,000 emails a month, that's plenty for most websites. And if you end up getting a free account and you went through my link in the description, if you upgrade some point in the future, I will get a credit for that. It does not make it more expensive for you, but it's a super easy way to support this channel if you like what I do. And if you end up doing that, I really appreciate it. And before we finish off this video, we want to make sure under general settings that we verify our domain so we can send from our own custom domain. So I finally got a domain verified, but it's not the one you're expecting. It's not the one that is this website. It's WPSpeedify.com. I think the problem is the Eljunko host that I bought on AppSumo has some stuff missing. It's Eljunko. 
Maybe if I contact their support, they'd be able to figure out what the issue is. I have this domain hosted on SiteGround and the system looks pretty much the same or no, it doesn't. It looks different, but it has all the same stuff. So in SiteGround, you go to the site, you go to domain, then DNS zone, click on C name, and then you add the first value from the site mailer plugin here, the second value here, and it creates these three C names and it verified within 10 minutes. And this is how it looks now. So we have this domain that we're sending from, this is the email that we chose, and this is how it'll look when you receive emails. So hopefully you have an easier time than I did for getting this verified, and I'm pretty sure it's the host issue. So if you have a good host, it shouldn't be a problem. And if you got value from this video, make sure you hit the like button to let me know, and then click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then check out the video that's on the screen right now, which is for the Elementor Image Optimizer plugin. It also works on all websites. There's also a free plan. Check out that walkthrough. Check out the free plan to see if it works for you.